Dude, I'm just going to say it. Has there ever been a city in the United States luckier than Orlando, Florida? It's a swamp. We were there for a week. Every single day that we were there, it was 36 to 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, thunderstorms for an hour in the afternoon. And the, the quote-unquote trademark real feel was 45 degrees Celsius. 99% humidity. Uh, everybody outside is sweating. Their, their shirts and pants completely changed color. They were, they were dying. But Disney World came in and saved them. They almost built in New Orleans, and then all the government officials were like, how about a bribe? How about a bribe? And Walt Disney said, suck it. I'm going to Orlando. And single-handedly saved the city from irrelevancy. Universal came in. SeaWorld came in. They were, they were blessed by an archangel from above. I want to give you my Orlando experience, okay? The... The, the parks, every, obviously it's a bubble of like manufactured happiness. And that was very pleasant. People call you, sir. Hi, friends. I uh, hope you're having a great day. Wow, nice shirt, et cetera, et cetera. The only time we were in real Orlando was the Uber drive from the airport and the Uber drive to the airport. You might say how much could go wrong. The Uber drive from the airport to the hotel, dude arrived, no front bumper, on the Uber, the entire time the dude was driving, he was driving with one hand, eating pistachios with his other hand, and then tailgating like less than a meter away from every car in front of him. He never used his signal light, except one time he used his signal light and then he left it on for like five minutes straight. And I swear to you, we, we drove past a sign that said like, welcome to Disney World. And we were going like, you know, 60 miles an hour, 65 miles an hour. He was like, do you guys want to stop real quick and get a picture? Like, we're on the, the freeway, dog. What do you mean you want to stop and get a picture? We were like, ha, 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 that's okay. Got out of the car. I said, it was the craziest Uber drive I've ever had in my life. It's me, my wife, my two-year-old daughter, and my 11 and eight-year-old niece. I'm like, we're about to be on the news for like, a, you know, a horrific accident or something. Uber drive to the airport a week later. Dude shows up in a van, very nice, puts our luggage in the back. Everybody gets in, we strap in the car seat, we put our, our daughter in the car seat. He puts on Alvin and the Chipmunks, the, the squeak wool on the DVD player in the back. Everything was great. He drove very pleasant to the airport. He was making conversation. He said, I hope you guys had a great time. We get to the airport. Some car is not where they're supposed to be in the like deloading zone at the terminal. He honks once, no response. Honks twice, no response. Lays on the horn for like 10 seconds straight and then like zips into the spot. While he's getting our uh, suitcases out of the back, the woman who was parked there rolls down her window and she was like, I was just about to leave, but your ass was too impatient. And he said, Fuck you, fuck you, you fucker, fuck you. And she said, you fucking asshole, you fucking dickhead. And then he started to like play like an, an air guitar and like close his eyes and smile at her. And she said, you fucking dickhead, you fucking asshole. And then he like gave us our luggage. Uh, then he got in his car and they were just yelling at each other through the window. And then he drove out and like cut her off so that she swerved into the other lane and almost hit another car. And then everybody was just honking at each other. I was like, Orlando is, I don't know, man. It's not, it, I don't know what happened to this city. I get that, like, I don't expect everybody everywhere to be, like, as happy as the workers are paid to be happy at Disney World. But, like, it's a damn mess, man. Also, why does the water taste like gasoline? Because of the algae bloom? I don't know, man. Also, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, hey, God, I'm kind of losing it at this one. Someone said, is he Venezuelan? I had a crazy Orlando Uber driver two weeks ago that sounded like that. I don't know, man. He could have been Venezuelan for all I know. I'm not saying it's the same guy. I'm just like, it's possible. I set off the metal detector at TSA PreCheck and they just waved me through. Justin, it's all made up. I was kind of losing it at the... At going through security too. It's, you know, at Orlando, for, maybe it was just that day. 
the security, when you put the shit through the conveyor belt, they don't have bins. They were like, just put all your shit on the rods. I'm like, are you crazy? I'm not putting my cell phone on the damn rod and sending it through. So I just opened up my backpack and shoved it in there. But I'm like, what's, what's wrong with this poverty airport, man? You think I'm going to put my car keys on the rods? There's no then the dude said, I, I folded up the stroller and went to like hand it to the security agent, which is what you do at every other airport. And he said, nah, dude, put it through the conveyor. I said, will it fit? He said, we're going to find out. Okay, we put it on. It fit. But at the same time, I was like, why are you do, doing this to yourself? It's insanity. And then, so I'm dealing with the one guy. Take your shoes off. Don't take your shoes off. Put the stuff in the bin. Not that one. There's no bins. You got to take out your laptop. Don't take out your iPad. Like every airport has different rules. And then uh, I go, I, this is my protocol. I stand in front of the metal detector and I wait for the agent to go like this. This time, I stand in front of the metal detector. The dude sighs and says, you don't have to wait, people. Speaking to nobody in particular, but obviously me specifically. You don't have to wait, people. Just keep on moving through. Would it kill you to just like be a little bit nice? Like I understand you're dealing with stressed out people all day, but at the same time, like every airport is different. As some air I'm in Florida, motherfucker. If I just walk through the metal detector in like Miami, they're going to shoot me in the chest. No, in Orlando, oh, that's Miami. That's Miami. It's different there. In Orlando, you could just walk through. You don't read Southeastern American airports quarterly? Go to character select. I don't, I don't know what any of this stuff is and I'm scared. Singrim Bold Pebble. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. Singrim Bold Pebble. Let me learn some more about this individual. Is there like a, is there a character biography or something like that? I'm sorry, I can't. Let me get the tale. The Grand Tournament, a prestigious event hosted every year by a group of powerful callers known as the Daya. Isn't that the cheese that's made of like uh, eggshells? Speaking of Daya and other foods that taste bad, some of you guys are cool. Do not eat at the Orlando Airport Outback Steakhouse before you get on your airplane. I had to defecate on the airplane. It's the first time I've done it in like 11 years. I would never defecate on an airplane unless it was an emergency. And it was an emergency, okay? And then my wife was like, oh no, is your stomach okay? I said, I don't think something, something was not right with that Outback. And then yesterday she had a stomachache. That's all I'm saying, okay? Also, the two kids, like my nieces, ordered the kids chicken tenders, $8.99. My wife ordered the adults chicken tenders, $16.99. Tell me that motherfucker didn't bring out three identical plates. That's all I'm saying! Now let's see, we got Volcanus. <laughs> Choose from a roster of fantastic creatures such as the Mushroom Man Amanito or Magma-based Elemental Volcanus. Don't forget about Grundy, the ghoul scrapper, and Bark, a tree folk mage who can conjure a distracting replica. I didn't even tell you, so we, the waiter came over to the Outback Steakhouse table where we were sitting. Very nice, had a great attitude. Said like, can I get you guys some drink? I said, I'll have a bloke sized IPA. He said, no problem, sir, brought it over. Then he said, and this is a simple misunderstanding that happens all the time in Communication, because communication is complicated, okay? He said, are you guys ready for food? And I said, I think we're good. He then said, oh, okay. And he took all the menus and started taking them away. And I understood what was happening. He thought I said, we're good, as in we don't want to eat. What I meant was we're good to order. I said, oh, actually, we will order some food. And his demeanor changed like it snapped he was like oh and then like threw the menus back on the table and then i was like awkwardly reading out like what everyone's gonna have and he was just silently writing it down and i was like <laughs> we did not get good service for the rest of the meal as well but it is an airport outback steakhouse so it's kind of like what do you expect i don't feel like i miscommunicated i feel like when you say we're good in response to are you ready to order, the good means I'm affirming your question. Yes, we are good to order. If he had said, 
do you want any food? And I said, You're, we're good. Then he would be in the right. In my Language is complicated, okay? So I'm just saying, if you ever find yourself in the Orlando airport, if you're at Terminal B, flying to Canada, maybe, or Puerto Vallarta, don't eat at that Outback Steakhouse, okay? It's one of the worst airports in America. Not my ass having a horrible time at the Orlando airport. Uh, for all the stuff that happened that has pre previously been covered in anecdotes, but then also the first time when we arrived at the airport, it took us like, I didn't even talk about this one. We landed. You have to take a train from where you land to get the baggage claim. Who the fuck designed that? That's like my ass in Factorio. Why would you ever not have the baggage in the same building as where the airplane comes in? That is insane. We had to get on a train and take the train to another area where the bags were. Me and the plane were this far apart when we arrived at the airport. Anyway, then we get to the baggage carousel. The sign says, your flight, the bags are on carousel 29. I flew WestJet, okay? Not to brag. When we get to Carousel 29, there's a very over it looking guy who says, in case you're just getting here, if you came in on WestJet, your bags are on 28. I said, oh, okay, thank you, sir, for your help. Not my ass, sitting on Carousel 28 for like 25 minutes, watching every bag come in. Departure airport, YYZ, 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 YYZ. I'm like, man, this is sure a lot of Toronto bags. I don't see any of my bags. I don't see anybody that's even on my flight, except I was talking to people and I was going, hey, where'd you guys come in from? And some of them were like, oh, I came in from Vancouver. This guy told us to come over here. I, after like 20 minutes, I said, fuck that. I go over to 29. I see like 100 people from our flight. They're just standing there. And I was like, oh, the guy said they're on 29. They said, yeah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. The dude is literally just out of here trolling. Like you are getting paid to make the airport worse. You understand? I'm not one of those people that's like, you should be fired. But like you're actually, your presence here is actually making the airport worse financially and logistically. But it didn't even matter because that 25 minutes that we waited for our bags, who cares? Our bags weren't fucking out on 29 anyway. We had to wait like another 15 minutes for our four suitcases to come out. And then we finally get them. Ah, oh, the hard part's over. Then we get in the Uber with the dude who's eating pistachios with one hand and then driving with the other hand and tailgating. And then people are honking at him and he's looking at me like, what's going on? And I'm like, you're the one driving the car, dude. But then I was like, what the hell is wrong with this airport? I look it up online. Seventh best airport in the United States. Are you kidding me? I've been to some bad airports in the US, but like, that they must have paid somebody off. Cause like, let me just put it this way. It doesn't hold a candle to pain field. Does it beat O'Hare? It probably beats O'Hare, okay? But I also, so Dan, I was telling this story um, that like we had a, a Lyft driver who got in a verbal confrontation with uh, another car at the parking lot well, or at the airport while we were getting out of his car. This is, I'm asking this question honestly. What percentage of Floridians do you think have a gun in their car? Because I was, I'm always on my best behavior, but I was definitely, especially outside of Disney World, I was aware of the fact that it's like, don't fuck with anyone. Cause they might kill you. But our, our Uber driver was just like, he was lighting this lady up and I was like, we're gonna be on the news, man. She's probably got a, like a CZ90 in her glove compartment or something like that. She might have a P90 in her glove compartment for all I know. Or like a FAMAS, I only know Counter-Strike guns. She might have a Reaper in there or a, an op. You watch the news too much? I don't watch the news, the news comes to me. As I don't turn on the news every day, just every once in a while on Twitter, you'll be like, tragic, Lyft driver gets entire family killed by just having no patience. Florida seems kind of crazy. I mean, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really going off on Florida. People from Ohio are probably watching this right now like, yes, yes.
But I always, whenever I had talked about like my personal, this is not like a ranking of how valid they are, okay? It's just a ranking of like my perception of them. Whenever people were like, rank the American states, I'm like, boom, California, New York, number one. Go ahead, boom me if you want to. Washington, Oregon, way up there. Throw in a Colorado or something like that. But then right below that, I would be like, Texas? Because at least it has its own, like I might not agree with everybody in Texas. It's got its own culture. It's got a great cuisine. It's got many big cities. It's got its own identity and stuff like that. And I said the same thing about Florida. I said Florida might not necessarily be for me, but it's got a world-class city in the form of Miami. Uh, it, it has the... Uh, I'm not getting into it too. I was going to say good economy, but I'm not trying to, you know, because I don't know where it is in the economic rankings or whatever, but it's noteworthy. Like, it's not like fucking Indiana, right? Like, what, who knows anything about Indiana? The Colts play there and they do an auto race. Okay, you know, but like, what is, what's the Indiana identity, right? Like, if, if you met someone at the airport and you were like, where are you flying to? They're like, Indianapolis. You'd be like, oh, you have family there? They'd be like, nah. You'd be like, what, it, what the fuck is wrong? You're, you're vacationing in Indianapolis? No disrespect to people that are watching the stream from Indianapolis? I'm just, I just don't get it. But anyway, it might be great to live there. I don't know. I'm just saying to visit. So I had previously said that Florida is like, you know, at least it's not just like a state. It's Florida. It's got oranges. It's got beaches. It's got Miami. Good food and some. Then when I was in... Orlando, I was like, I would rather live in Indiana than live in Orlando, straight up. Like, our ass is up here. It's, it's borderline temperate most of the time. It's basically pleasant. And we're doing compost. Your ass is getting cooked down there in the swamp. You're not even recycling? Are you stupid? Tomo, Tomo, Tomo. I shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have said it. The big culture shock that I always, and it's very mundane, but the big culture shock that I have whenever I'm in the United States is that one in three people is wearing college football merchandise. It's sincerely, I know you're going to say like in Canada, isn't one in three people wearing like a shirt with the Montreal Canadiens logo on it? No. They're mostly wearing Hurley. <laughs> like me. <laughs> it's, it's a uniquely American phenomenon, man. Say OH in an Ohio airport and you'll be shocked. Or in an, in an airport in America and you'll be shocked. Oh, I already know about that. Like you're going to laugh. I found out about that from the damn Disney cruise. I had no idea. I was just in a, in a room and somebody said OH and like 20 motherfuckers were like IO. It's like, you know, like your ass is in like Puerto Vallarta right now. What are you doing? I'm from Ohio. We mostly hate that. All right. I'm just said, listen. You owe it to yourself to go on a Disney cruise then. And if somebody says OH, you got to stand up and be like, I want you to know that I'm also from Ohio, but I am choosing not to engage in this. And then I would be like, that's the guy. Chad, you wouldn't believe it. There was this crazy dude on the ship with us. Holy cow. And for no reason, he got into a fight with a bunch of other people. All he had to do was say IO. I mean, come on. Hey, Tech923, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I would say like probably the craziest part about Ohio is that I don't even like know anything about it. But I definitely that doesn't stop me from talking about it. Like I just want the do people from Ohio know that nobody knows what the fuck a buckeye is? It's a buckeye state. This this state is shaped like a buckeye. What the fuck is a buckeye, bro? Please don't get them started. <laughs> it's a chestnut. It's a nut, you ass. I, with God as my witness, I did not know that. I bet 75% of chat plus had no idea that a buckeye was a, was a nut. I thought it was a bean. Listen, don't you have some OHs to IO to? Stop wasting my time.
I don't know what I'm doing. I keep losing my train of thought because I'm talking too much. <laughs> and also, I don't have anything against Ohio anymore. I did before I went to Central Florida. I had something against Ohio when I had been to Miami. Because when I left Miami, I was like, I get it, but it's not for me. When I left Orlando, I was like, even if the plane crashes, at least we made it off the runway. That's all I could ask for. The parks were great. It's simply the normal parts of Orlando that were, <laughs> that were frightening. It's like that, that tweet about uh, Coca-Cola. It's like Coca-Cola is the best American invention. It's like a, a wonder of the world in civilization because it's like a man-made flavor that didn't exist in the wild. Like man had to reach into his own psyche and, and pull out fucking Coca-Cola. What do you think cola nuts are? Brother, this shit doesn't... Ask people what Coca-Cola tastes like. Mmm, tastes like a cola nut. OH. Come on. You, I know you can't help it. You might su submit. Submit. You know you can't stop it. You got Manchurian candidated. At the football games. At the college football games. I know. You got... Do it. Come OH. OH. I O. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. My new stereotype of Ohioans is that they know too much about nuts. <laughs> Apparently. No! I don't believe it. Believe it! Oh. I'm, what is it? My libido's gone berserk. I don't want to go to work. I don't want nothing to eat. Driving up and down the street. But only two weeks ago, two, three, you said you'd never leave me. Two, three, four, but here I am alone. One, two, then in this world of reckless happenstance, why do good things have to go away? Two, three, and leave you with nothing. Two, three, four, and she left me with nothing. If you know the word, sing along. Ah. You ever listen to Prozac, man? That was a song, dude.